30 gram ice cube at negative 10 degrees Celsius is placed in an aluminum cup whose initial temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. The system comes to an equilibrium temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of the cup? So first off, let's draw a diagram of what's going on. So we know that we have a phase change diagram. So down here, we're starting out with an ice cube at negative 10 degrees Celsius. So this is ice down here. And then we're saying that we are going to end up at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So in order to do that, we have to take the ice, we have to melt all of it, and then we have to increase the temperature up to 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to take the ice up here, and then we're going to take it all the way over to melt all of the ice, and then we have to increase the temperature even more to 20 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to have the aluminum somewhere up here at 70 degrees Celsius, and that has is going to lose its energy to come down to 20 degrees Celsius. So the energy that we have to available in order to melt all of the ice is only coming from the Q of aluminum. So remember from a previous video, anytime we have a slanty line, we're going to have m cat, and anytime that we have a flat line, we're going to have m times LF or m times LV. So in other words, we're saying we'll have an m cat of wa of the ice, not water, liquid water, I guess. So frozen ice, and then we're going to take the mass of the ice times the latent heat of fusion. And then we're going to take another m cat for the water up to 20 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to have an m cat for the aluminum. So we want to find the mass of the aluminum right here. So we know that all of this is going to equal zero. So what I mean by that is we're going to have the energy that we take to increase the ice up to zero plus the energy that it's going to take us to take the mass of the water all the way over to melt all the ice plus all of the energy that we have to take the mass of the water from 0 degrees Celsius now all the way up to 20 degrees Celsius. Now um, we are also going to add the m cat for the aluminum and all that is going to equal 0 meaning the energy is conserved. So you might be confused saying hey well if we add the m cat of the aluminum that's going to give us even more energy won't it be a minus and the answer is yes because we have a positive value here, but the delta T here will be a negative value. So that will then turn this whole thing into a negative. So we can then add, here that's kind of confusing, I'll show you. So now if we erase that, now we're saying because of the change of T, this will be negative. Now we can add over mc delta t for aluminum to both sides of the equation. So now we have the mc delta t of ice plus m times the latent heat of fusion times the, or not times, we're adding all these, plus the mc delta t of water is equal to the mc delta t of aluminum. So this makes sense mathematically. We're saying all of the energy that we have to change the ice is only coming from the energy available to us from the aluminum. And since we don't know what the aluminum is, we're going to figure out how much the mass of the aluminum is in order to do all that. So let's divide both sides by C delta T of aluminum. C delta T of aluminum. So I'm not going to write that out again so you don't have to sit here and watch me do it. But just know, maybe I'll just erase it. 
that this is going to equal the mass of the aluminum pan. So now we can plug in our values. So when we do this, we get the mass of the water, they tell us, is 130 grams. So 0 0.13 kilograms. I'm not going to write all the units just so I can try and squeeze it in here. And we're going to multiply that by C of ice, which is 2090 times the change of temperature of the ice, which in this case is 10 Kelvin. Going from negative 10 up to 0. Okay, so now we're going to add the mass of the ice, 0 0.13, times the latent heat of fusion of water, which is 3.33 times 10 to the 5. Now we're going to add, finally, the MCAT of water, which so 0 0.13 kilograms times 4190 times, I uh, didn't make it, um, the change of temperature from zero to um, zero to 20 degrees Celsius is 20 Kelvin. Now we're going to divide that by 900 times the change of the temperature of aluminum. Now be careful because if you said it's a negative 50, you would be correct in the sense that that is the true delta T. But remember, we already took care of the negative up here whenever we said the negative for the T is going to be negative. So we'll bring it out front and turn it to negative, which allowed us then to move it over and make our equation. So we will just have 50 Kelvin. So when we do all that, the mass of the pan now will give us 1.264 kilograms, which is equal to 1.3 kilograms.